This has been a long time in the making, guys. Welcome to the first official episode of the Your Mate Tom podcast. I know that I've interviewed a couple people before, uh, quite a while back, but this is the official start of this series. This isn't going to be purely about psychedelics. This podcast is going to be uh, pretty much about anything, I guess. As long as the guest is cool and interesting and has some positive value to add to the world, then I'm going to want that person on. So that being said, we cannot continue and grow this podcast without your guys' support, whether it's liking the video, leaving a rating on iTunes, which by the way, if you just want to listen to an audio version of this, I'll leave a link in the description box below. Technically, I haven't even started my iTunes account, but don't worry, I will do that before this video gets uploaded. If you do support this podcast and this channel, as many of you know, I talk about very controversial subjects. And as soon as I put any related titles or tags to do with drugs, YouTube demonetizes my videos. So ad revenue is pretty horrendous. <laughs> so all my funding does depend on... Patreon and you guys supporting me on there. So check out Patreon. Once we hit our first milestone, I think we're almost three quarters on the way there. I will be able to work on bigger project pieces of content like my girlfriend's first acid experience, which she had in Adam's house, which is going to be epic. Potentially that could be my most viewed video if I do it right. And I also have a few awesome ideas in the work. I also documented my San Pedro experience in Peru where I actually ran into a fellow Australian who's a comedian and funnily enough he was vlogging the experience as well. So he was kind enough to send me all the footage. So I've got a lot of content to work with but again this takes a lot of time and effort. And not to give too much away but I also want to do like an LSD trip simulation and really cool documentaries that doesn't necessarily have to do with live experiences but I'm just going to keep it on the hush hush but just trust me once we get enough support, at least for the first milestone, this is not going to be enough for me to like live on full time, but it's a really good start for me to put a lot more of my time and effort and put this channel on my highest priority. Another way to support this channel and podcast is to get merch. I'll leave a link in the description box below. We've got a few cool designs. Actually, if you are a graphic designer and are interested in working with me, then email me at yourmatetom3 at gmail.com with a portfolio. And if you have experience with t-shirt designs in particular, then that will be a bonus. So this episode is also brought to you by Audible. I don't know about you guys, but I don't necessarily read a whole lot. And that's, I don't know, I just, my eyes get really strained and it, it, I struggle to focus and sit down and just read a piece of paper for that long. What's cool about Audible is that, well, apart from the amazing library of books, some which I would recommend is Mastery by Robert Greene, Cutting Through Spiritual Materialism, there's The Power of Now, there's a whole bunch of others ranging from all different genres. What's really cool about audiobooks is that I'm able to listen to it while I'm doing other things, whether it's cleaning around the house, who am I kidding, I don't clean the house, maybe going for a nature walk or just kind of sitting outside. So yeah, Audible, uh, you'd have to click on the affiliate link below where you get a 30 day free trial and you get one free audiobook. So yeah, so go check that out. It would be cool if I had more sponsors, but I don't think people particularly enjoy what I have to say. I'm like sweating bullets every day here. I'm in Thailand at the moment, just had to get away for personal reasons. Actually, I had a pretty intense ordeal, you could say, after a psychedelic triggered existential crisis, which I had when I collaborated with Adam after having this very potent African root bark, also known as Iboga. I just had to have some time away and have a break from everything and really, you know, have some time to self-inquire, eat clean, take a break from all drugs. Cannabis is my kryptonite. But anyways, let me introduce my first guest, Julian Palmer, also known as the father or founder of Changa. Some of you may have heard of Changa. It is a DMT infused herb that has an MAOI. Some like to call it a smokable form of ayahuasca. It may not have the oomph and shoot you out of a cannon like Freebase DMT does, but it is more of a smoother ride and tends to last longer. You know, like of course Julian talks about it in this podcast. Uh, he's a very interesting guy. He's also the author of Articulations. I'll leave a link in the description box below, but go check out his work. He's a very seasoned psychonaut and a fellow Australian who has traveled the world 
and has had a lot of experience in facilitating these uh, psychoactive plants, right, such as ayahuasca, changa, uh, so on and so forth, and cactus as well. His knowledge on plants and psychedelics is just something else, especially about DMT, and he has a very unorthodox view on ayahuasca and may have a little bit of a different opinion <laughs> to how it should be done. So it's a little bit different to, let's say, the traditional Peruvian way of facilitating ayahuasca ceremonies, but you guys have to judge for yourself. So listen to what he has to say. We talked about Changa, DMT, ayahuasca, a little bit about the politics of ayahuasca, synthetic versus organic substances, whether or not we should continue using psychedelics, how we got into his journey, and a whole bunch of others. So it was a very interesting conversation. He actually gave me a, a rape snuff before the interview, which uh, you could say is very grounding, very <clears throat> Luckily, he didn't give me too much because there are certain strains which can just make you violently purge. Uh, luckily, I didn't. I actually enjoyed this one. It was quite gentle and calm, but still somewhat intense as well. Yeah, trust me to have a rape hit on my very first podcast. But anyways, I'm very excited to see how this journey goes. I've always wanted to start a podcast for a very long time. I thought now is the right time, you know? If you guys have any guest recommendations or comments and criticisms, then please don't hesitate to comment down below. Like I said, it doesn't necessarily have to be a guest in the psychedelic field per se, even though, of course, I will be interviewing people in those fields, whether it's people from MAPS perhaps, if they, ha, that rhymes, if of course they agreed to come to my podcast because who knows, maybe some people will just look at my videos and be like, ugh, I don't want to be associated with him, it's fucking psychedelic bogan. But like I said before, I can't do this alone and with your guys' contribution, particularly on Patreon, we can make this thing happen and grow because I think that there are not enough people talking about these sorts of topics. Oh, just one more thing. If you guys want to like volunteer or potentially work with me and make like a cool music intro for this podcast or maybe some graphic designing, then yeah, hit us up and email me. Uh, yeah, just go to my page. It's not hard to find. But yeah, enjoy the podcast, guys. Much love. Peace. So before we start this podcast, Julian's going to give me some happy. <laughs> <laughs> Right. This isn't your typical interview. So you know how to re so. you know how to receive it. <laughs> so yes. breathe half half of the way in, and then hold your lungs. Oh, I hold on the in breath. Um, no, breathe in halfway like this, and then hold your breath. Okay. And then I'll and then you help guide this. start to an interview. <laughs> what are you feeling, Tom? Very grounded. It's mm. like a punch, boom, just in my body. I'm very present. How does it feel when I, when I blew it up into your nose? Um, it was a bit uncomfortable. Mm. Um, I've had worse, so. Mm. Mm. This is one of the more pleasant side. Yeah. The pleasant rape, is, okay. rape is what yeah. you want to call it. Yeah. The ra rapey. The rapey. <laughs> Rape with an accent. <laughs> Sometimes it gets, it feels like you're getting raped up the nose. Mm, mm. This one isn't too bad. Mm. It's not too bad. Yeah, I didn't give you too much. Yeah, some people can purge and... Yeah, I've had, yeah, because mm. I had one ceremony and he gave me, I don't know how much he gave me, but it was just... And I was just so sick and like throwing up. Oh, that's good. I just feel very calm. Mm. It's nice. Alright guys, so I'm sitting here with Julian Palmer, the founder of Changa, a very experienced psychonaut, and yeah, I'm just really excited to have this conversation. And I know I'm going to start this off in a very cliche way, but at the same time, I think it's very interesting to know people's origins of the story and how they got started. So okay. yeah, how did you get started okay. well, on this psychedelic journey? Because as you know, it's not an easy one and it's very stigmatized. Mm. So um, I guess, yeah, what got you started on this and what has made you continue to stay on this journey. Okay, yep. Well, actually, everyone asked me this, so it's good you asked me this. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I say, watch the video with Tom. Yeah. But um, it was actually 1999, 
and I was working in IT with a friend yeah. and he started an IT company around Byron Bay because that's where he's from. And I just went there the other week actually. Mm -hmm. yeah. And he invited me to work with his company and um, the company lasted six months. We did a fair bit of work and then he married an Icelandic lady and had a baby with her. Oh, yeah. And um, she's now the leader of the pirate party in Iceland, <laughs> by the way. And um, uh, I was out of a job. Yeah. Uh, I went on the doll, and I I met a, a crazy American man. Just for those who don't know what the doll is. <laughs> oh, it's Australian unemployment benefits. Yeah. <laughs> so it's money you get when you when you don't when you stop stop working. Yeah. So after that. I was free. I did Vipassana, 10 day Vipassana, which is a meditation retreat. And I found a magic mushroom growing in the fields. I found one magic mushroom on the first day, the third day, and the fifth day. <laughs> really? <coughs> and you just went for it. And I, I went for it. And I had taken one mushroom a few weeks before that. Just literally just one just mushroom? Just one. And it day. really affected me, and I just laughed and laughed and laughed. And and what, what species was it? The, uh, the uh, commences. Okay. Yep. Yep. And after that, I didn't have anything to do. And I realized that my job was to start taking psychedelics. So mushrooms were growing in, in the fields where I was living. Yeah. And I would go out into the fields all day and take a massive amount of mushrooms. And how much is massive? <clears throat> well, I get, I cut them up and peel the skin off, which is quite important, I think, with the cubensis. Oh yeah? Um, why, why is that? Uh, I think there's some toxins on the skin, mm. and a friend told me that, and I, I've, I've taken it on board, and I always find it to be better. Okay, like less nausea and less like, yeah, body load and Yeah, stuff. much less body mm. load. Interesting. And, um, yeah, I just cut them up, I uh, take them with orange juice, it almost be a sort of full plate. <laughs> it's a oh. plate. And sometimes with Syrian oh, roux as well. Like mushrooms and Syrian root. Yeah, wow. yeah, which doubles their potency. Yeah, it makes it more like ayahuasca, and it has a very cosmic experiences. Yeah. And I was, I was not a spirit. I was sort of like a spiritual seeker, and I was yeah. reading lots of spiritual books. So you're open-minded, very yeah. open-minded. And I really got to some incredibly potent, beautiful cosmic places taking those mushrooms. Um, and around the same time I was introduced to DMT, yeah. smoking DMT, and that changed my life. The next week everything was magical, everything was open, there was, yeah. um, I think it does something to the pineal gland. Like everything is amazing and interesting, yeah. or inspiring. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. I and mean, there's quite an activation that occurred. And then um, I moved into a temple on a, on a little community. Uh, and Where, whereabouts is it? In Myokum, near Byron Bay. Ah, oh, that one over there. And um, there, uh, again, I, I was like, okay, well, this is my job. Yeah. Um, um, and I just kept, I took everything that I could. And I had taken psychedelics previously, but I started um, taking um, everything. Everything I get my hands on, I, can, mm. I tried it. And I especially started taking uh, DMT orally with Sirim Ru. Yeah. And I took crystal DMT orally. So um, how you, would you do like, let's say one capsule of the crystal and then one capsule of the... Not other. quite a capsule, I'd sort of eyeball it and... Oh, okay. And, and, and just the, one after the other. Yeah. Okay. Those days I would crush up the Sirim Ru, uh, like three grams, and I'd eat, eat it. Now I make a tea from it. Would you say that's similar to the ayahuasca experience? Very similar. Yeah. How, it's how long did the... How does it last? Two, four, six, eight. Ah, okay, yeah, so yeah, similar. yeah. It's 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 a kind of a pure way. Now I make a tea from it. Yeah. But it's basically the the beta carbolines, the harmine, mm. um, harmaline, and and the DMT and the other alkaloids from yeah. the acacia because the DMT was nice. from the Australian acacia. And around the same time, my friend, maybe more than me, he was giving DMT to a lot of people. <laughs> Smoke DMT a lot, hundreds and hundreds of people. Really, he took this to be his job as well. <laughs> where, where would he give? Well, like, would he go to like festivals and give people it, DMT? Or yeah, he'd what? go to he'd go to parties. We we would just kind of put it out there that we we'd give it away for free, and we'd find people who wanted to do it, and it, we'd just meet people in the most magical circumstance. 
uh, synchronous. A lot of DMT experiences happen like that. Yeah. Because I noticed with a lot of people, even myself, like when I was first seeking it, it took me two years to finally find yeah, down it. And yeah. The way it finds you, well, it finds you. That's right. Yeah. That's right. And we were the it. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, um, and we just wanted to share it and just wanted to learn how it worked. And we just saw it was really beneficial for people. We saw that it, there was uh, an opening into... Uh, I would say uh, high dimensions, mm. and this is what everyone will report. Yeah, and this is really interesting stuff. Of course, this is really interesting. It's, stuff. it's something else. Yeah, and I think you can. So many people report the same experience, like going into the same realms, meeting the same entities. Like, if well, that's it. I that's mean, what's interesting. Rick right? Strassman, after his studies, he said that people would report yeah. meeting these beings, and he said. He couldn't tell them what they were experiencing wasn't real because they were reporting it. Mm. And we had the same experience. We just allowed people to digest and we allowed people to integrate and we talked to them about it and we really, you know, created a safe space for people to have these experiences. Yeah. So, um, and, and you know, we didn't charge money and I don't know, many, many hundreds of people all around Byron Bay. And there were other people as well giving DMT, but we were probably quite predominant at that time. Yeah, no shit. And with DMT, would you say that that is a substance that you would recommend for a first timer, or is it something that you need to work your way towards, or it doesn't matter because it's a completely different thing anyway? Well, this is the thing. I probably think that, th that DMT uh, in crystal form is really hard to smoke. Yeah. Um, you, you, at that time we used a glass pipe, like a crack pipe. Yeah. We didn't use more, it's like crack. And, uh, we used a jet flame lighter and we had to train people to smoke it. And it's it was, not easy. It's not easy to smoke. Especially to go, to break through. Exactly. Like I personally yeah. haven't broke through because I've gone to that um, stage where it's so terrifying. Yeah. Like, in my case, my last case, I would have like these demonic entities almost. Right. And it would just scare the bitches out of me. I'm well, like, that's ah. it. I guess that's why it's good to have someone there with you. Exactly. Yeah. Who's um, training you to push past whatever you're yeah. facing and to go deep. Yeah. Especially if it's someone who's been there themselves. Yeah. 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 Um, and so, yeah, that 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 answers your question. I and I just kept doing it. I kept sharing it with people, and I kept exploring. And, uh, um, you know, Changa came out of that exploration. Yeah. And how did you discover Changa and how did, you know, how did you discover that if you mix an MOI with the DMT molecule and then somehow you smoke it? Well, it started with ayahuasca. Yeah. Um, I was given a whole lot of shredded ayahuasca that someone managed to get into the country because Australia is very tough for is it, regulations. Is ayahuasca, is the vine legal? Yeah. Um, I, I, th like I, I, I think it's, I think that, I, I say that scratching your ass is barely legal in Australia, yeah. you know, probably, I mean, if you, <laughs> yeah. if, if you interpret the legis very obscure legislation yeah. from very obscure texts, I think it's still a little bit of a grey area. Um, mm. I don't think that, that, that your average policeman is going to bust anyone for shredded ayahuasca vine. Yeah. And um, at that time, and for many, many years, people just ordering on the internet, it would always get through. Uh, mm. I never heard of, maybe I heard of a few people who didn't get through, but... Okay, so it's a grey area, but it's like... It's quite a grey area. I guess the authority doesn't care. It's not like on their highest priority to bust people. It's not really a priority. Like ayahuasca. I've only heard of one guy in Australia being busted with the tea many uh, years ago. Yeah. Well, I guess you could say it's like um, picking mushrooms. It's very illegal on paper, but no one's been arrested for it. In WA, like, in WA, some people when, have been arrested. When was this? Uh, some years ago, maybe okay. over a decade ago. But it's, it's very rare for someone to get like actually arrested for it. Yeah, it's, 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 it's know, rare. Anyway. It's rare. It's more the farmers who don't want people treading on their land and it's more that part of it. Um, but uh, yeah, so we were smoking the ayahuasca vine, I was giving it out to people, and it's really good to smoke, just by just itself. Just by itself, really? Yeah, it actually does something. It's quite subtle, but it definitely has a, a grounding, centering, um, uh, therapeutic benefit. Mm. So I was 
sharing that with people, and they loved it. People loved it. Well, yeah, it's, uh, sorry to cut you off, but it's interesting you say that the ayahuasca vine has very therapeutic uh, properties to it because the mm -hmm. shamans believe that it's the ayahuasca that's the medicine, yes. not necessarily the yes, you know, the DMT or yes. the chakruna. That's right. Yeah. Well, the shamans for them, they don't even know about DMT. They just put the ayahuasca in the vine. They put the chakruna in. They say this mm -hmm. admixture adds light. And there's other admixtures they use yeah. as well. Right. So we, with Changa, the idea is that the other plants, you're, the other herbs yeah. you're adding in are like admixtures. Mm. So the, because the DMT and the ayahuasca vine are activating those herbs and plants yeah. you, are, you are using in the, in the smoke. Mm. So um, at that time I was doing a lot of experimentations and... Um, what I first started doing was sprinkling DMT on ayahuasca vine, shredded yeah. ayahuasca vine, and then sharing it with friends. And we would smoke this and just sitting down in silence and then we might play some music and dance or just stay yeah. in silence. And um, it was beautiful. And do it out in nature and it was more gentle than like a full blast off DMT experience. Yeah, it's like getting shot in, out of the cannon to hyperspace, mm. right? Mm. Computer, yeah. So I was doing this for a while, and we'd call these luxury joints. <laughs> luxury joints, <laughs> I like that. Um, and yeah. after a certain point, um, uh, we got some goo, a whole lot of goo out of the acacia. Okay. And um, I thought, maybe I could infuse this into ayahuasca vine use some alcohol and infuse it in there yeah, right. at 50-50, one-to-one ratio. Yep. And um, some friends, I, I, I went to, I went overseas uh, for Christmas, but some friends, they shared this all around the Shire. They just gave it to people as kind of like a Christmas present. And <laughs> um, I came back and the, the reports were, oh, it's too strong. It's too strong. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, no. Yeah. It's, too like much. it's too much. Even <laughs> the most hardcore DMT smokers were like, nah, it's just too strong. <laughs> but they liked it, but yeah. it was still too strong. So I thought, hmm, okay. So what about if I add some other herbs? Because I heard that peppermint and marlene were really good for smoking DMT. Mm. It was like the best herbs yeah. for smoking DMT. So I added some peppermint, some marlene, some passion flower, which has got an MAO in it. It's a really relaxing herb. Oh, some okay. blue lotus yeah. flowers. Yeah, and that's the original recipe, twenty five percent. So you, you you add more herbs, you ha halve the ratio from fifty percent to twenty five percent. That was and more optimal. Yeah, found from that the, was pretty optimal, yeah. even twenty percent. And that's that that was that's Changa, the birth of Changa. And uh, we called it uh, smoke mix or smoking mix. Okay. And uh, did you come up with the name Changa? Yeah. Okay. I did. I did because we needed a name for it. It was yeah. just smoke mix. Smoky mix. No, we didn't name yeah, this. Yeah. This is actually people like this, you know. Yeah, right. And um, then uh, I thought it's got to have a colloquial name, name that yeah. resonates with everyone. And I did an ayahuasca group at my house, and the name came through Changa, and I was really? like, like through your ayahuasca experience. Yeah, so that's okay. the name that came through, and I'm like, that sounds really Aussie. <laughs> it sounds really Chang like Changa, mate. Yeah, like Fucking <laughs> smoke some Changa. <laughs> Sounds really bogan. Like bogan means like I, d I say to overseas people, it means like working class Australian like from Australian like rednecks, Australian <laughs> white trash, <Yeah. laughs> like lower socioeconomic category. Yeah. So a it's a little bit yeah. cringe worthy for Australian people to say that because it yeah. sounds um Just almost stereotypical. Yeah, stereotypical <laughs> yeah. Aussie. So I thought that was hilarious. I thought, okay, is this a joke name or something? But I reckon your average man on the street is going to resonate with this. Yeah. Well, even when I heard of Chang, I had no idea it was, it was born here in Australia. Mm. But then when I found out it was you who came up with Chang, I'm like, mm. oh, of course, it sounds Aussie yeah, mm. as Chang, of course. <laughs> but it means all kinds of things in other languages. Yeah, it's, it's spread all across the world. Mm. Hasn't it spread mm. to even some in, um, like countries like Peru and stuff like that? Yeah, all through South America. Yeah. Uh, you know, every every continent. Uh, How do you feel about that? Um, yeah, it's, it, feel, it cool. feels it feels like a child who has grown up and doesn't want anything to do with their father anymore <laughs> and has their own life. Wait, yeah. and sends in postcards every now and then. You <laughs> yeah. know, so that's how I feel about it. It was in the 
in the early mid noughties quite some time ago. Wow. Uh, and I, I don't really, I don't really smoke it myself these days because no? I find it quite harsh on the lungs. Oh, okay. So um, it it feels a little bit a little bit distant for me, but yeah. yeah, no, I did I did start the fire certainly. What what about um, DMT? Do you smoke that? No, uh, I don't. Okay. I, my lungs are quite sensitive. I do, I do smoke. You know, yeah. I have a, quite a good relationship with cigarettes. Like I smoke tobacco every now and then. Um, but I found find the DMT smoke very harsh, and I'd say that's the biggest disadvantage of mm. chain them all. Smoke DMT is the harshness of the smoke, and I, I agree. I don't yeah. think it's that good for you. It's not easy. So for me, um, I prefer ayahuasca or Syrian ruin acacia, yeah. which is I use the the leaves or the phyllodes. I make a tea mm, okay. for the Syrian ruin acacia, and for me, that's that's pretty much my preferred yeah. um, mechanism. Not necessarily ayahuasca, but the Syrian ruin tea, and okay. the tea made from the leaves of certain species of yeah. acacia. Well, it's because the experience is more prolonged, so I find personally that's able right. to like absorb. That's more, right. I mean, and gain more insights. That's right. Whereas I mean, DMT is like you come back. Oh, what the fuck? Yeah. Was that? What yeah. Happened? Well, you know, changa can be ten minutes, twenty minutes. Yeah. It can even be forty minutes. Oh wow! But um, if it's got a lot of the the ayahuasca line, if it's yeah. got really strong ayahuasca line in it. Or the the people have amplified the ayahuasca line and made five times, ten times. But you, you you don't need that. That can be a yeah. bit heavy, you know. That yeah. Can, yeah. Whereas you wanna, I think with DMT you wanna release the the spirit to, to yeah. travel to fly, yeah. which is you know what I think that can be very therapeutic. Yeah. The high dose ayahuasca changa, but I I I think that ayahuasca by itself in the changa is fine. Yeah. You don't need to enough. boost it. And people think, how is it even possible it can extend duration? It's like, well, it does. Just try <laughs> you it yourself yeah. and you'll find out. Yeah, exactly. I got a lot of questions from people from Instagram. They just want to know, I guess, what is the main differences between Freebase DMT and Chamber? And, you know, is there one preference or, you know, what, what are the pros and cons well, of these? I don't, I don't give uh, Crystal DMT to these people these days. Like yeah. I give them Changa because um, it allows people to integrate the experience. Mm. And if you give people crystal DMT and a high dose, they'll come back and they're like, oh, what was all that about? I don't remember anything. Mm. It can be a little bit abstract. I, have, I yeah. have a friend, I have a couple of friends now, but one of them had an experience where he smoked the crystal, uh, pure crystal DMT from Acacia and the words came up, where's my carpi? <laughs> Which is the Manistriotis yeah, carpi, the, 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 the Latin name for. So, <laughs> and I had another friend say yeah. to me recently, had the same experience um, right. where he smoked the crystal DMT and oh, not that much happened. And I've had that experience as mm. well. So I don't find the crystal DMT so useful because ayahuasca helps integrate and guide the, yeah. the the uh, DMT. Yeah, I was like, there would be some people that would disagree with the with that in terms of having a very profound experience with DMT. But mm -hmm. I don't. I personally don't find it that common between yeah. people. It's only like a select few. Yeah, yeah. Um, it just depends on the individual, I and suppose. I think it's you. It can be a bit tricky to weigh up the crystal. Yeah. And to smoke it, I think the sandwich method, uh, in, in putting it in a bong and layer layer of herb. Crystal DMT, yeah. just, layer just any herb, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Some people use parsley, but like, I think some you people know, use weed. Like, what's your thoughts on mixing marijuana? No, with? yeah, no. Use use parsley if you've got nothing else. <laughs> or but passion flower works really well. Uh, again, oh, passion right. flower, mint. Uh, yeah. These combined, and mullein mm. again uh, is is very good for the lungs, so it helps yeah. the lungs deal with the smoke. So. Yeah, these are the these are the classic herbs that I find work really well, it's and I've yeah. used many many other herbs, and need I still come back to this recipe for these herbs. Yeah, right. Mm. Um, I I wanted to divert this conversation more to ayahuasca since yeah. we're on the topic. Yeah. And because I went to your talk the other week about mm. the politics of ayahuasca, which is very interesting, mm. and just your whole view on that uh, was one of the catalysts which made me like I could talk to this guy. That's mm. very interesting. But what is your overall 
I guess, perspective on the shamanic use of ayahuasca and just the traditional way it's done in mm. the Amazon. Mm. And I guess the ayahuasca tourism that's going on. Right, right. Well, ayahuasca is used all through Amazonia mm. by many different tribes. And some of them may just brew up the ayahuasca and not use any chakruna. Yeah. Uh, and or just use a little bit of chakruna. And say indigenous people when they do ayahuasca, of course each tribe has their own method. Yeah. But from what I hear from people, they just drink and in the forest, even in the daytime, and they just enjoy the experience. Yeah, right. Which and is very uncommon in the ayahuasca tourism space. Yes, yes, space yes, exactly, sure. exactly. And so I think indigenous people have a more liberated perspective. I first mm. drank with the, the Mama Yaktas from Ecuador in uh, 2005, the oh, first nice. Amazonian yeah. shamanism conference. And we would drink outside, which is great. I would, I would always yeah. do that. I think that's a very good way to drink. Yeah, yeah. And they, there was no container in a sense. It was yeah. just like, just here's the medicine and do what you want. Yeah. And there's no rules. It's just people, mm. people were talking a bit, you know, um, but it was just very liberating and free. So I think indigenous people, mm. they're the purely indigenous people, um, how they take these plants is not necessarily structured or ritualized. Okay. So they're not as, as anal about it. As yeah. many people think. Yeah. The, 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 the tourism that sprung up has, a, has largely focused on Peru, where ayahuasca is yeah. definitely legal. Yeah. And that's a mestizo tradition. The mestizo means mixed race. Mm. And it, it's the mixture yeah. of all these tribes and um, also mixed with the white people and the conquerors. Okay. And so the mestizo people, traditionally, they even would introduce elements of Catholicism. And sorcery. Oh, yeah. the, the first shaman that I went to, he was a, a Catholic mm. faith. Yep. So, yeah. 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 Say that. Yep. And so it's it's the mestizo tradition is more a Western tradition mm. because yeah. a lot has been happening in the Amazon for a long time. It it's not just uh, in the Amazon that that white people suddenly rocked up in the last few decades. Yeah. For example, the rubber tapping. Yes, yeah. going on. I think that was the nineteenth century. Yeah, you know, late nineteenth yeah. century. So there's a lot of activity been going on. So a lot of cultural influences, and I generally think that the mestizo tradition is one that's been um, informed by many different influences as well. And what we have in ayahuasca tourism is the the shamans, curanderos, vegetalistas, whatever you want to yeah. call them. Um, <laughs> They're actually they've created a new form mm. to cater to tourists. Yeah. Because when they give ayahuasca to their own people, it's not uh, necessarily going to be a really strong brew. Yeah. But the the gringos who come, they want to have visions. Yeah, of course. They yeah. want to see stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, when Terence McKenna and Jonathan Ott went to Iquitos in the eighties, in the early eighties, neither of them could even find ayahuasca brew that could give them visions, which a lot of people wow. don't know about. Yeah. This, is, this is all written in their books. You can, you, can, you can discover that. So they both said, go on, put the chakruna, put it in, <laughs> where we want the visions. Yeah. <laughs> what DMT, go on, don't be shy. And so, yeah. as it is, the customer's always right yeah. in, this, in this situation. So people think, people think that the shamans in the Amazon have been giving giving um, and and utilizing high DMT brews right. for thousands of years, thousands of years, generations. Yeah. The, the shamans um, may, be, may well be taking the very, the much stronger brews, mm. but um, what they may be doing in the space is often something that we would consider something like dark sorcery. Yeah. Like fighting yeah. each other. Yeah, there's a lot of that. I hear a lot of stories of shamans mm. going to the astral realm and like, yes. you know, sabotaging each other. And stuff. Yeah. There's a lot of ego yeah. going on. Yeah. Uh, that's what I've noticed. In the and it's a years. little bit crazy to us because we're like, wait on, <clears throat> um, isn't the ayahuasca supposed to help you to work through this sort of jealousy? <laughs> <laughs> what's, what's going on? Yeah. Not necessarily. Yeah. I think that ayahuasca can amplify the ego. 
Mm. And I, I think mm. it can show you your ego and you can choose the ego and it will quite amplify it in quite a um, horrible way. Yeah. Or you can choose to, to um, you know, deconstruct the ego and come with a more pure intention. And I've met some, yeah. some shamans in the Amazon who are coming at it with a much more pure intention. Yes. Who've chosen the way of no ego. Yeah. But it's like the gurus in the, in the 60s. Mm. Yeah, sure, there's going to be some cool gurus who actually have got some wisdom and got some juju. But probably most of them, like... Don't take your girlfriend. Yeah, you know, yeah. Be very yeah. careful. The hard Bar the buyer beware. Yeah. Because there's a lot of money and um, yeah, man. coming it's, in. To I've just noticed right it's like, like the first two years ago when I over two years ago that's when I first drank ayahuasca. It was still it was popular, but it wasn't like too. I still didn't know too many people. But now, two years later, yeah. fuck, yeah. there are so many people there. Yep. Yeah. And, so, and, and for ayahuasca. all those people, that someone's got to meet the demand. Yeah. And so th there's what you'll find is that probably the majority of it is a kind of charlatanism mm, unfortunately yeah. is the case and so at my talk a lot of people a couple of people said they came to the conclusion it's better to drink with the gringos the white mm. shamans in in peru because the brute was stronger and they would cater to the western yeah. gringo mentality mm. um, so yeah, a lot of people somehow think that the really psychoactive, strong, visionary brews and the way that the mestizo shaman in Peru give ayahuasca is something they've been doing for a long time. Mm. It's not necessarily the case. It may be the case traditionally they drink the ayahuasca and they'd be able to diagnose the, the illnesses of the, the people that they work with mm. their, from their village, which is often yep. the case, and then they'd know which herbs to give them. And they would, mm. you know, maybe they might do some, some healing work with them, yeah. some clearing work with them. So um, it's not necessarily the case that the people who really want healing are drinking the ayahuasca, though that is certainly part of it. Yeah, part so, of their um, tradition. They're too. giving a lot of um, tourist doses. You mm. could say, yeah, as well. Yeah. There's very few retreats that actually give you the proper mm. dose. I was very fortunate. The last retreat I went to, they actually give you a yeah. powerful brew. Well, this is the other side of it. Traditionally, the indigenous people and the Shipi the Shipibo people yeah. and the traditional medicine that, you know, a lot of people in around Iquitos drink ayahuasca. This is really good for your health. Yeah. But the dose they're drinking is a more medicinal dose. Mm. And so yeah. a lot of a lot of the, the, the shamans, they get, they're, they're not necessarily adding, piling in the chakruna. Yeah. They're preparing it how they always have, mm. which is not necessarily that strong or visionary. Yeah. So not the breakthrough DMT land. No, dose. no. Yeah, yeah. But for me, I have that medicine because I'm quite, I'm quite sensitive to it. For me, that's fantastic. Yeah. That's beautiful. That's like a fine wine. Yeah. But for your yeah. average um, person going to the Amazon, they're not necessarily going to get the visions and what they're looking for mm. in a lot of the doses yeah. that are given. On the other hand, you know, a lot of these shamans, they, they, they got some, you know, forests of Charlie Ponga, which is another plant they use <laughs> okay. and, um, and Chakruna and they know, all right, we pile it in there yeah. and everyone's happy. <laughs> What's up, yeah. And I had some really strong experiences when I was there in 2005, yeah, 2006. Right. And um, what is your thoughts on drinking with a shaman or a guide? Do you think it's 100% necessary to have ayahuasca with some sort of a facilitator? Not necessarily a shaman per se, mm. but just mm. someone who has had a lot of experience with it to guide you through it. I, I think that you, if, if you've never done it for sure, you've got to have mm. someone there. You've got to have mm. someone looking after you. And it prob really should be, unless you're living in Greenland or something, yeah. <laughs> and you you don't know anyone who can help you yeah. out. Uh, you know, maybe get your mum involved if yeah. she can sit for you. Um, someone there to make sure that you're not going to kill yourself. Worst yeah, case really, yeah. That you're safe because yeah. some people can really freak out, and they just need assurance mm. and they need assistance and. You know, there's all kinds of story, stories on the internet of people calling the paramedics, calling the ambulance because they're drinking by themselves and they're freaking out and they don't know what to do with themselves. Mm. And if they had a friend there or ideally someone who's experienced, who can, you know, really, who knows what to do, yeah. what to say 
how to bring them back and how to allow them to integrate and deal with their experience, um, that, is an, that is an ideal scenario. And I yeah. think most people these days are, are actually looking for a facilitator, uh, curandera, whatever word you want yeah. to use to drink ayahuasca. Very few people are looking to drink by themselves. It's mm. more a situation of experienced people who are like, all right, I don't necessarily want to pay $200 a night for the rest of my life and I want to be able to go deeper. Okay. And in that instance, I think that's more a scenario when people would want to drink alone. Yeah, so the people who've had enough experience that they sort of yeah. know how to Maybe even a dozen or a that few dozen experiences. Yeah, because I can, I'm definitely a big believer in drinking with a guide, especially yeah. if you haven't experienced mm. it. Because mm. even myself, like I haven't had a huge deal of experience with psychedelics, but mm. I've had enough more than the average person mm. and even in the last retreat I went to a full had a very terrifying trip where I went to a, a I had a psychotic breakdown yeah and if there wasn't people there that's right. I could have either hurt myself or killed myself you know that's so, right so that's I was very right. grateful to like fuck could you imagine if I did this by myself yeah, that's and some right. people do and they have no idea they don't like, that's right treat it with that level of respect yeah. I suppose yeah I think it's not to be fucked in with, my yeah. in my experience most people understand that it's to be treated yeah. with respect and that it's not a drug and it's not a way to get high. Most people get that because yeah, yeah, you know, sure. you're, you're going to be vomiting, sure. you're going to get diarrhea and you, you're going to feel often just sick as a dog yeah. and all the stuff that's not working for you in your life is going to come up <laughs> and it's going to be really weird and trippy, you know, yeah. it's not like, <laughs> it's not normal, it's not, normal. No. it's not fun for a lot of people. I agree, yeah. um, but a lot of people still want to call it a drug, you know, it's which is strange, which is strange. It's but not... then if you want to go down that level, then anything can be a drug, you know, dopamine's a drug, yep. serotonin's a drug, caffeine's yep. a drug, yep. nicotine's a drug, yep. but then somehow these medicines, I don't know, it's, it's funny how someone, people distinguish like bad drugs from good drugs. Yeah, it's just yeah. very strange. I, I, I don't even use the word now, the word no. is kind of redundant because it could mean Seroquel, which is antipsychotic. That's a drug, yeah. or it could mean coffee. That's a drug too. Yeah, exactly. you know? It's like, okay, well, what relevance does the word have if you've got so many things? Can be yeah, in exactly. That category. Um, do you this day still get some flack for what you do, or like you know, because of the stigma behind these substances? I think less and less. I yeah. think that I think these days more and more people are curious yeah. and they a lot of people have met someone or know someone whose life has been positively affected yeah, by sure. ayahuasca and they've 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 seen something on TV mm. or they've read about it and I think most intelligent people are like wow this is really interesting it is yeah, very interesting is whether you or not you want to do them or not mm. it's fucking fascinating yeah yeah no I I, sure. I think that uh, definitely, this is something that society would do well to integrate in a healthy way. Yeah. And I think what's happening now is a lot of how ayahuasca is being utilized may not necessarily be that healthy. Mm. And I think we're still like in the toddler stage, you yeah. know, we're in the screaming twos of, <laughs> of, of how we're using ayahuasca. And yeah. it's not the ayahuasca's fault, it's our fault no. that we're not mature. And we don't necessarily know how to deal with it. Yeah, there's still so much that we don't understand. That's well. right. Like science is, scientific research has just started to pick up right. since the, the 90s, the, since the Strassman study. Mm, mm. But I think that has helped a lot in reducing the stigma behind these substances. Because yeah. now it's like, well, it's scientifically proven that they can help with all these treatment resistant mental illnesses that people have. That's right. Like, Especially anxiety and depression. Yeah, like and people, people yeah. just feeling. People just feeling like they don't really want to live. Yeah. You know, a lot of people, they are on the verge of suicide. A lot of people drink ayahuasca. They're like, all right, now give this a go. Otherwise, I'm going to top myself. Yeah. And the, the option that society gives them is just take this pill. Yeah. Just numb your pain out. Well, well, a lot of people, they don't know that SSRIs, as they, as they were originally intended, were originally intended to be taken for a short amount of time. Yeah. Three months six months, get back on your feet, stabilize your condition, yeah. and then you can actually live your life. But what, what, you're, what you're getting these days is people who are taking uh, SSRIs for extended 
periods of time. Yeah. And sometimes for years. Yeah, years, many, yeah. many, many yeah. years. Many, many years. So I'm not a massive fan of SSRIs. Yeah. Because there's no there's no healing of the condition involved. Yeah. Well, like you said, I think they can be useful if you've gone to that point where you just want to top yourself and they can mm. buy you some time. But exactly. apart from that, it's not going to help you deal with the root cause. No. Like, let's say you know, a big dose of ayahuasca could. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. And and even you know, one, what I've been saying to people recently is even one person really changing their life and, um, you know, becoming happy and positive and releasing their defensiveness and yeah. fear and anxiety and all this stuff, it affects all their family. It affects mm -hmm. all the people they know. And because, say, there's, what, six degrees of separation between every human being? Okay, so if, if friends and family get, you know, 10%, then if you think that carries over to well, it everyone, it spreads like a virus. It spreads. Yeah. So I think that um, you know ayahuasca, appropriately utilised, can be and is extremely positive force in society. Yeah. But what we're experiencing is may not always be that positive because a lot of people are not taking a high enough dose. Yeah. Uh, and so they're not really experiencing the full benefit of what the medicine can do. Sure, it's affecting them and they're getting some positive things out of it, but there's not that level of self-confrontation or ego loss. Yeah, 100%. And even what you, what you were saying before about psychosis, as I see it, when people drink ayahuasca, they'll start to see their own, the craziness. They'll start yeah. to see their own... Um, psychosis and what I like to say it's not the ayahuasca that's crazy it's us that's crazy of course yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly on Instagram there are a lot of questions probably like five people asking the same thing and exactly mm. they want to know like what is your opinion on this DMT realm or just psychedelic realm in general like is this DMT place that you go to is it like an actual reality that exists mm -hmm. out there or is it a projection of our mind and what do you mm. think of these sentient beings that a lot of people go into contact mm, with. Mm. Well, I think a lot of people think there is such a thing as a DMT realm, <laughs> and I don't see that there's a DMT realm. Yeah. I think that DMT can take people to many different kinds of realms. Mm. And yeah. some of them can appear relatively consistent. You can be like, oh yeah, that's the DMT realm. But there's so many different realms and places mm. that DMT can take people. I see it like a super neurotransmitter. Yeah. Because it, it's related to serotonin. Uh, DMT is N in dimethyltryptamine. Yeah. Serotonin is 5 hydroxytryptamine. It, I see it mm. like a super neurotransmitter that connects the brain and allows uh, a greater degree of consciousness and mm. awareness of so much more. For example, you're in this. You're experiencing reality like this, and suddenly you smoke DMT, everything just opens up. Yeah. You know? And you're like, wow. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think even if you look at the mechanics on psychedelics, they decrease the activity in your default mode network, which mm. is like this brain filter mm. Right? Mm. that filters out other layers of reality. So yeah. It's just interesting yeah. Yeah. that you say that. Um, so, where I've come to is that how I experience the beings um, yeah. that you experience. And I've been doing it for a long time now, like, like 18 years. And yeah, it's a long time, yeah. um, I think in the first few years, it took me, I used to say, it would take me 667 experiences before <laughs> I was, was, my rational mind was able to accept what was happening mm. on its own terms yeah. and not try and explain it away. Mm -hmm. So just, just allow myself to experience it and now I just experience it. Yeah. It doesn't go away. No. All these beings, they just keep coming. <laughs> <laughs> doesn't matter how much you try to yeah, rationalize yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, I, no I, and I, I, I just, at some point, I just surrendered. Yeah. And, and when you surrender, you can start, you can go a bit deeper down the rabbit hole. Mm. You can really start to um, find out what's happening here. Yeah. And I think that's valuable. But I also think that it doesn't necessarily make you a better person. No. You know, it doesn't yeah. do anything for your life. <laughs> uh, it's really interesting. Yeah. 
and I think the the nature of the beings and the dimensions makes sense to me. It's like quantum yeah. physics. It's like so many dimensions. It makes sense that this is not the only reality. Oh, yeah, it's only yeah. logical yeah. to me. And when you have many, many, many experiences of other realities, yeah. other beings, other dimensions, you just accept it for what it is. And it's so it's so astounding and awe-inspiring, and it really inspires people to a degree that nothing will. Does it make sense that the brain is just hallucinating that, projecting it out of yeah. what? No yeah. one's explained any mechanism there. But, so, but then you can use that argument of saying that this whole universe is projected through our mind. It doesn't make it any less valid anyway. But yeah, well, I don't know. Like, you, you got to ask, okay, what's the universe? Yes. What's the mind? You know? Yeah, it's a lot of deep existential questions. Yes, that yes, we need to ask. yeah, yeah. For sure. Um, like, I don't have a particular stance on this. It's just sometimes my logical brain will be like, oh, you know, these are just projections of our mind, but then sometimes you have such a profoundly insane experience that you start to question, like, fuck, this feels like another place. Like, I just don't believe it. It's just purely my mind that's constructing this. I think that Occam's razor is a very useful tool. And Occam's okay. razor says the simplest explanation is normally going to be the correct one. Mm. And okay. I think that that um, the simplest explanation is that we are experiencing other dimensions and other beings who reside in those dimensions. Mm. It's really not that complex. Whereas any other explanation is much more complex, doesn't make as much sense, is not as rational and logical. Yeah. It's just that humanity has a prejudice against um, at this point, in general, not, I would say, Western humanity in yeah. particular. Yeah. Like, I was in Brazil recently, and talking to Brazilians, and I was saying, a lot of people in Australia don't believe in spirits. And they were like, really? <laughs> <laughs> in Brazil, that's common yeah. understanding of how things are. In Brazil, they've got mental hospitals, like 50 mental hospitals, where you go there, and before you're even treated, uh, seriously, the psychiatrists and nurses Will practice exorcism upon you. Really? Yeah. Yeah, it's oh, called shit. spiritism. I had no idea. No, yeah. no. So, in many cultures, they have a more, they have a, uh, an understanding of spiritual realities yeah, like and a these things. Kind of yeah, yeah. Of yeah. Whereas, we're so caught up on the idea of that, that, that our version of reality as developed through yeah. science, and um, science kind of Threw the through the through the baby and the bathwater away. Yeah. And yeah. and y you know I think there's a little bit of a, a rational scientific prejudice. Yeah. That 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 disclaims um, or or poo poos anything that can't be measured or or, or as of yet. Yeah. 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 Well, exactly. even, even look at um, lucid dreaming for example. They used to be considered like voodoo and pseudoscience and mysticism and all mm. that kind of shit mm. until it got scientifically proven in, mm. in mm. was the 70s or something. And yeah. they're like, oh, mm. it's a real thing. It's like, yeah, no shit, we've known this for a thousand years. Yeah, yeah. I, I think that the, the who knows when it will be, but at some point humanity will collectively accept that, you know, we live in a, a spectrum of multidimensionality and there are many dimensions and many different beings that the universe the multiverse is an alive ecology of many different forms and many different beings, mm -hmm. and that's just logical. It's and that just makes sense. Mm -hmm. You know, you look on the earth, there's creatures that live in the deep sea, <laughs> like like everywhere you go, there's crazy creatures. You you look into the electron mic microscope and there's these you know, insane looking little guys. Yeah, exactly. Everywhere. That were invisible once. Yeah. Like you could tell that to a scientist like 200 years ago mm. saying there's this invisible bacteria yeah. that made up from our cells and blah, blah, blah. And they'll just look at you like you're crazy. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. So that's how I see it. Yeah. Mm. Well, yeah, I, like science is definitely an amazing tool, which I use a lot, but it's not the only tool. That, mm. I think that's a distinction that people Well, all, look at. also, um, I know in Russia there are scientists yeah. who have been trying to understand multidimensional beings. Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. There's a documentary called Knocking on Heaven's Door. Oh, and, um, yeah. and in the documentary, it's uh, 
they they show uh, an old lady yeah. who who works as a scientist in a Siberian rocket scientist city. So right. it's only rocket scientists and super intelligent people who live in the city, oh, and she does experiments um, facilitating people yeah. using the latest technology they have in Russia to communicate with multidimensional beings. Wow. <laughs> yeah. No shit. So I'm gonna check this out. Yeah. yeah. So that's why I say it's a yeah. little bit of a Western prejudice yeah. against the 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 supernatural, or, tr or at least trying to explore yeah. or understand why that is. There seems to be some blockage there. Yeah, it, it's not about blindly accepting anything. It's just about opening that discussion mm. and experiencing mm. it for yourself. Mm. I think mm. that's what's important. Um, I guess I want to move more towards. Um, more DMT, but it's like, is there a difference between, let's say, smoking DMT from one species of acacia versus another? Like, is there a real difference there in terms of experience? Yeah, yeah. As I see it, each acacia is, in a sense, the, the visions that yeah. you're having. Many times it's like the acacia is projecting an image yeah. to you. It It's painting on your visual cortex. Mm. So... The artist is totally different from species to species. Yes. So different acacia species will show you a different version of reality. Mm. So for me, the difference between one acacia species and another is vast differences. Mm. Vast differences. Interesting. Would you say the same with mushrooms and all these? Yeah, kind of mushrooms as well. Plants? Mushrooms yeah. as well. Yeah. I've only experienced the ones that grow here. The yeah. Uh, Psilocybe, Siberia, Osa. Yeah. Those are the only yeah. ones I've experienced. Right. I don't even know what okay. Cubensis trip feels Vastly like. Vastly different. And no shit, huh? depending on whether it's grown in um, indoors or whether it's in the wild, in vastly different. Mm. Vastly different. And the age would be a factor as well, right? Yeah. Or, yeah. yeah. Um, and so with the acacia species, I guess many people would say, well, uh, DMT is DMT. Yeah, yeah. I've heard that many times. Yeah, as well as whether it's from yeah. um, synthetically made or from a plant, it's going to be the same because yeah. because we say it's the same. Yeah. <laughs> and science isn't the same, so you better listen, Sonny. Yeah. So it's a little bit like that. But even on a scientific perspective, you can if every single species has different amounts of alkaloids in it anyway, so it's going to be different. But no, not necessarily. No. Some acacia species are just pure DMT. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and so you can try them and it's a different yeah. world you're experiencing, a totally different consciousness mm. and you're communicating with that consciousness. Yeah. I mean, again, this is one of these things a lot of people are going to find hard to believe, but when you say you take acacia with serene root, you start talking to the acacia. It talks mm. to you, it communicates with you, yeah. and it tells people things. People yeah. get this with ayahuasca, but ayahuasca tells people things, mm. it shows them things about their life about their character, about their conduct, about how they're being in the world. The acacias will do the same things. They will talk to people, yep. tell them things. And what do you find the main differences between like using Syrian root for an ayahuasca root versus the ayahuasca blend? Well, the Syrian root is a bit more transparent. Okay. It's a bit more, it, it's a bit more a facilitator. Okay. It doesn't necessarily do that much by itself. It does do some things. Okay. Uh, whereas ayahuasca is doing a lot of stuff. Ayahuasca uh, is very, it, it, ayahuasca is a very strong voice. Yeah. And I, it talks I, to I people, yeah. it, it communicates with people, it heals people, and it heals people on a very deep level and mm. really gets in there and does a lot of work, healing work. Whereas the Syrian root doesn't tend to do that. Yeah. It facilitates the, the DMT so that when you take Syrian root with, with an acacia, you really get to hear the voice of the acacia. You really get to experience mm. the teaching of the acacia. Okay. The wisdom of the acacia. Acacia's time to shine. Yes. Yeah. Whereas you take ayahuasca with acacia, uh, it might be more about what the ayahuasca has to say. Yeah, right. And you say ayahuasca is more teaching. merciless in that sense? I'm not, I wouldn't say it's <laughs> merciless. I just think I, you know, ayahuasca is considered the mother of all plants. Yeah. And and is a very wise uh, presence mm. and, and, and a very powerful healer. So it tends to really predominate. Yeah. So when you take Syrian Rue with Acacia, it's not so much about healing or about mm. the personal. It can be a bit more transpersonal and cosmic. Interesting. So for what a lot of people are looking for, 
Syria relocation was often um, preferable for for the visions for that cosmic experience. To give Syrian try. ruin acacia is is underrated. Yeah, very underrated. yeah, because it's not very common. Ayahuasca gets all the time. yeah, yeah, and and ayahuasca you know has to grow for so many years. In yeah, a, in yeah. Australia, you know, Syrian roots considered poor man's ayahuasca <laughs> because you know you literally buy a quarter of a kilo from the Persian supermarket Whoa. for three bucks. <laughs> Still, <laughs> and and, and ayahuasca is, yeah. is 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 very expensive, and you just need a teaspoon of seeds, like three yeah. grams, yeah. and you're set. With ayahuasca, you need anywhere between say thirty grams and hundred grams, okay. something like that. So Syrian root is more convenient. Syrian root is more con more convenient, and uh, I think that allows the the voice of whatever plant you use it. You can mm -hmm. take it with. Chakruna, you can take it with Charlie Ponga as well, yeah. and it will bring their voices to the fore as mm. well. Interesting. So, would you say, like, if you if those ayahuasca brews, sometimes people mix like five or even more plants? Mm. Do you think that it gets muddled up the voice? It can or? I no? But what can happen is the admixture plants can yeah. come in and do some work. Okay. So the admixture plants are added there, uh, and the ayahuasca activates them. Yeah. The DMT activates them, and Sometimes they can come through more than the ayahuasca. Mm. It can be the case. Yeah. I do think that I'm, I wouldn't, I'm not so much into using any more than one admixture plan at a yeah. time. Unnecessary. And, yeah. and, um, but some people like using five or even a dozen That's admixture a plans. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but for me, uh, that, that could be confusing. <laughs> you don't need to. That's like... Uh, Quite, that's, that's quite quite some French cooking. You know? Yeah, yeah, I think it's a bit unnecessary. Mm. But with, I guess, what is your opinion on organic substances versus synthetic counterparts? Like, do you think that the organic plant version of something is usually going to be more beneficial for you, or it depends? Yeah, on I mean, substance? I in the early days I explored a lot of these synthetic compounds, yeah. and I was really into a lot of them. Yeah. You know, I take a lot of them, and I got a lot from them at the time. Like MDMA. MDMA yeah. was one of them. Yeah. You know, I think MDMA is like really helps people come out of their yeah. shell, like socialize yeah. and feel more free with people, and yeah. you know, feel warm and open towards fellow human beings, all yeah. that stuff. <laughs> Um, so I think it can be helpful, but also the research chemicals like 2CB and DOC and DOI and now it's just like some crazy alphabet soup and I think <laughs> some, pe lot. some people can get a bit caught up in that. Yeah. When at the end of the day a lot of them are just phenethylamines and tryptamines. Yeah. And, and, and now I, I come back to the plants, the original phenethylamine is mescaline. And the original mm. tryptamine is DMT. Okay. And there's so many different species. Yeah. So they're just derivatives of those two originals. Yes, most of them, pretty much all of them. Yeah. And they're they for me the original is the best. Yeah. And and the substitutes are are, are nowhere near. Yeah. You know, you can have some powerful experiences with these research chemicals, but I came to conclude that I felt that they were they were doing some damage. Yeah. That, that I could feel, yeah. that I could experience this fallout in my own being, and that was being shown to me when I took them. Mm. And so that's what I said in my book. I said, we, we, they are research chemicals. Yeah. We don't know what they're doing. I think that they have some deleterious damaging mm. effects that we might not be able to presently measure or understand. Yeah. But I've experienced yeah. that and seen that in other people. Yeah. So because it's so new, right? We don't know anything right. about it. Whereas at least, let's say, psilocybin mushrooms or ayahuasca, we have quite a few decades that's right. of research. That's right. So yeah, it's a little bit concerning the uh, all the all the chemicals being pumped out of China. Yeah. 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 Um, and yeah, I mean, if you go on with the plants, you, you should feel better. Yeah. Taking them a lot of the time. The in most in most cases. In most cases. Yeah. Whereas you take a lot of these chemicals, you might feel not that great for the next few days or even mm. a week or two weeks. You know, they, it's almost like that. they can take something away from you. It's like, for example, with um, LSD, and I've had a powerful experience with it, but the next day I usually feel not the greatest. Where yeah. With mushrooms, I usually get like an afterglow effect. Yeah, That's yeah. Just, well, LSD is semi-synthetic. Yeah, yeah, it's so it's still, fully, it's still yeah. synthetic. It's very powerful. Yeah, so like yeah. Very powerful I, substance. I yeah. think it can be useful, but also LSD um, 
it depends what batch you get. Some, bat, some batches are not that good. Yeah, which is why it's important to test your substances. Because mm. <laughs> you, you, you don't know what you're getting. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And some, what sold as LSD, can yeah. often be Chinese research chemicals as well. Yeah, these days. exactly. Like M bombs, which can kill you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you got to just be careful with that. Mm. Um, mm. All right, so I'm just going to go through some questions that I got from. Actually, I've got a personal question. Okay. Yeah, yeah, right. It's <laughs> like, screw all this I'm out of my own. I'm be selfish. Um, I guess from all the years that you've ex had these psychedelic experiences, do you find yourself continuously growing and learning from them, or do you subscribe to, like, Alan Watt's idea of once you get the message, hang up the phone? And what, just what are your thoughts on this? When should someone maybe stop with these substances? Or Well, I think it depends on the substance. Yeah. And what you're using it for. Say okay. something like 5-MeO DMT, <laughs> which is becoming really popular, a lot of people getting into it. Um, I, I, I get anxiety just thinking about <laughs> 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 I haven't even had it, it just seems really, really full on. Yeah, yeah. Um, Not my time yet. I think that it's, it's very potent. Mm. I think that it, there is a message there, yeah. and it's, a, it's probably one of the strongest messages. Yeah, it's like the God molecule. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it, like DMT is, Maybe not the gold molecule, but 5 meo yeah. definitely yeah. is. Yeah. And it will thing. pretty much, if you do it properly, it will pretty much take you there. Okay. And, but, once you've got that message, you don't need to keep doing that. No. You know? I spoke to James Orrock recently, and he says he does it once a year. Okay. You know, it's not something you reach back for every week. No. Because, okay, you get that message. Yeah. You know? Again... Smoked high dose smoked DMT. I've got that message. Yeah. You know, I've done that many, many times, and literally people will say, um, the beings will tell them, "Look, you've come back here. What are you coming back here for? You haven't, you, haven't you been here before?" Mm. They'll literally say that. However, I think that um, the ayahuasca, the mushrooms, the cactus, especially, like these are tools yeah. that we can use, and. It, and use any time in your life. Mm. And I feel, especially living um, in urban centres in Australia, I need to take something like cactus, ayahuasca, mushrooms, once a week. That, that really keeps me on the ball. Mm. It really allows me to deal with this crazy world we live in. Yeah. And it really yeah. brings me back into alignment and balance. Yeah. Um, Whereas if you're like living in nature, then you won't. Yeah, need them that's right. That's, yeah. Right. that's yeah. right. That's right. That's right. And I feel like there's many health benefits yep. to even taking like a gram of mushrooms. Yeah. Um, which is not a big dose, or even half a gram. Mm. There's many, many health benefits. So for me, I see the the psychedelics as as being the, what a lot of people maybe haven't come to, that I've come to after many years. Yes is seeing their medicinal value. I mean, I take all kinds of herbs and supplements, yes. but the something like ayahuasca, mushrooms, a cactus, does so many good things for the human body, mm. but not just the body, for the mind, the psyche, the spirit. Yeah. So it really does the job yeah. in that sense. So, um, you know, none of us are perfect. We're all, we're all learning, we're all, we're all here, and we're hopefully growing. Yeah, I think yeah. these tools can help us to grow and, and, and use our life. Yeah. Um, and also, you know, even though they can be so serious and they can provide so many benefits and they can be intense and crazy and you can have all these experiences, it can also be uh, a beautiful thing to take with other people. It can yeah. be like a wonderful social occasion. Through bonding. Yeah. Through something it's like really, that. It's really, really, it's a, something that a lot of people don't truly understand. Yet. Yeah. And I understand yeah. it because I see it. Um, rather than, because people say, oh, we're going to meet for coffee. Yeah. You know, it's like, we're not just meat. We just... <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I think that the, the social element, there's, there's healing in the social element. Yeah. There's, um, there's bonding in that, there's connection in that, and there's actually something beautiful in, it, in sharing something like going camping with friends and taking mushrooms, for example, yeah. or, or taking cactus and going walking in nature with friends. Mm. So, yeah, I mean, yeah, because the psychedelics open us up and, and 
you know, open up the senses and mm. open up the awareness. So, you know, that's not a message. I can't hang, hang up that yeah. phone. So it's like an ongoing dialogue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The, like, you know, these are, for me, you know, these are tools that help improve my life and improve the life of other people. Yeah. Exactly. And you'll know if you need, like, for example, for me right now, I'm just going on a huge break from all psychedelics yeah. just because I've had very heavy experiences in a That's short it. period of time. That's it. And I've, uh, done, I've done that um, for periods of six months, even yeah. a year, or even in the late 90s, many years where I didn't yeah. take anything because it can take so long to It takes a lot it. to process. It takes a yeah. lot. Yeah. A lot of people were saying these days that, say, with ayahuasca, yeah. integration is 80, 90% of it. Yeah, I yeah. completely agree. That's when the real ceremony begins, mm. pretty much. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And would you say that, are there any, what are the, like, the real dangers of psychedelics and what are the, who are the type of people that maybe shouldn't have these experiences? I don't know. I yeah. think that, I think that it depends on the person and where they're at. Yeah. And I think that maybe there's some substances that some people at some time perhaps should stay away with, mm. stay away from. But probably if, you know, if you get, say, a random hundred people walk in the door and yeah. I was like, okay, give this person that, give, per give this person that, like, you know, prescribe them something. Yeah. I reckon they get something out of it. Mm. But um, maybe some people shouldn't be smoking too much DMT yeah. if they're feeling ungrounded, if they're actually mm. not, you know... Um, paying too much attention if they're if they're so caught up in this this cosmic world and not paying attention to their the physical, physical life yeah. that's yeah. a problem yeah that's a real problem so yeah. especially with people who already struggle with maybe say being in this reality yeah or, yeah um, in, in that case I might say to them go take some cactus yeah go walk in nature take some cactus and that's more grounding sorry more I had a, I just remembered someone asked the question what are your thoughts on cactus and mescaline yeah, go walk in yeah. nature with your friends. It's like, yep, it's good. Yeah, <laughs> it's good. It's healthy. I, I find it a lot more gentle than, let's say, mushrooms or. It's very ayahuasca. gentle. It's very gentle. A lot of people think mescaline is like Beavis and Butthead take yeah. peyote, yeah. or Homer Simpson <laughs> takes the red hot yeah. chili. It's not like that yeah. unless you're you're eating ten foot of the stuff. Yeah, it's it's okay. quite subtle and gentle. Or people tell me, look, I take peyote, didn't do anything, mm. but the peyote is a medicine. I yeah. took peyote and I had maybe half an hour communicating with the spirit yeah. and then I was pretty much straight the whole day. I went walking in nature in Poland and I was pretty much straight the whole day. But that night I had a dream of my childhood home, which was, I grew up in a, not, not like a fantastic home, like yeah. it was a bit ramshackle and everything had been fixed in the home. Yeah, every, uh, the garden, mm. There were gardens and, and the home was just like... It, were, it had been reconstructed and the dream was telling me that peyote had, had fixed a lot of real foundations in my house. Interesting. You know? yeah. So I feel, um, you know, don't worry about the visions, don't worry about the experience. It's, it's not, a lot of people think that psychedel the psychedelic experience is all about the visuals and all yeah. that kind of stuff, but yeah. I don't find... As I that. see it, a lot of it is the plants are showing us visuals to entertain us, to keep us taking them, like, the they're, they're, like yeah, yeah, yeah. They're, they're like the dentist doing this work, yeah. and you go to the dentist, you've been to the dentist and they're showing you pictures of animals <laughs> yeah. and, and, you know, seals and whales and stuff yeah. in the sea. They're distracting and, you with you know, all the, the eye candy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the plants are doing the healing, yeah. the healing is happening, and it's a spiritual healing that's happening, yeah. and that's the most important thing. And that's what you're going to come away with as you, you're, going to, you're going to feel like a different person. Yeah. Ideally. And, yeah. and sometimes these things can be, the process can be very subtle. Yeah. Like sometimes people think they will drink ayahuasca and the next day they like, oh, I've got nothing out of it. Yeah. And then a couple months later, all these things start to shift. Yeah. And they're starting to notice the benefits and maybe insights mm. start to come in. Because, um, like you said, you know, the integration is like 90% of it. Yeah. And sometimes it takes a long time. It does. To fully it does. integrate an experience. And I think, like... The individual will integrate it. They just need time. Yeah. Maybe some people to talk to, but everyone has the intelligence and the capacity to just have their own thoughts, have their own emotions, and then yeah. they're just like after time, you're like, 
Oh yeah, I feel clear with that. Yeah. All yeah. right, I'm ready to, to maybe do it again. Exactly. You know? <laughs> but you know, you can feel it in your gut. Like mm. you feel that call. Like, yeah, yeah. I'm ready. Mm. I can go back here. Mm. Awesome. I think we'll just leave it at that, man. That yeah. Great. Right. Great. Right. Right. <laughs> well, thanks for thanks coming Tom. on, man. Yeah. I really appreciate awesome. it. That's it. Um, it. Do you want to? Where can people reach you? Like in terms of your website, get his book, articulations. <laughs> I'll put I'll put everything in the okay, show notes. Yeah, but yeah just yeah. tell everyone where they can find you. Julianpalmerism.com. Yeah. Mm. That's it. That's it. Okay. Awesome. <laughs> Simple. Sweet man. <laughs>